Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Michael Wright with Seven Pillars Photography. I want to give you a tour of what it's like for me to go to a venue and photograph musicians in a most difficult environment sometimes, concert environment, and then bring the photos back and edit them. This video will primarily concentrate upon the editing of the photos. I use Adobe uh, Lightroom to edit my photos. I use a Nikon D780 um, camera, a f-stop 2.8. The shutter speed is 160. I generally keep it at 160 to 200 uh, for moving uh, moving objects. That is pretty, it's been, always worked well for me. And the ISO, which is the sensitivity to light, varies based upon the venue and the lighting that I am photographing at. Now, each venue is different, presents its own challenges. The photo that you're looking at at the moment was photographed uh, last night, May 22nd, at Come and Take It Live. And Come and Take It Live is a venue that's no oh, hit or miss. Uh, I've been disappointed in them quite frequently, but uh, last night was very, very good. So I'm going to talk to you about how, now this would we be working on a different photograph. But I just want to show you how the steps I go through to get uh, the best possible representation of the musician that I photograph. But I wanted to show this to you first because composition in any photograph is critical. And composition, comp <laughs> easy to say, comp composition is uh, made up of multiple things. The thing, now, I take thousands of photographs. So last night over here, I took 4,044 photographs of multiple bands as well as still shots. Now, the question's been asked to me, do I go through them all? And no, I do not. What I will do is when, if I can, if I know an area of photographs that I want to go back and revisit, or if I know there's a shot that I captured, I will bookmark that particular photo on my camera. And how you bookmark it, every, every camera setting should have it. There's a way to identify a photograph to not delete. So that if you accidentally delete, that is a photograph that will not be deleted. So that's what I do. When I know that I have a shot like this here, I will bookmark it. And then when I, I upload my photos, and then I turn around and I delete the card, leaving only those that I've bookmarked, and I will re-import those. And then that gives me my working pool. And so I can start there. And if I need to go to other um, photographs in, in that particular range, then I can go back up to there and then scout around to see if there's something that's a little bit better. But this is how I pretty much find the photographs that I want. Uh, sometimes I don't have a chance to photograph. The action is just way too much. So sometimes I don't have a chance to, photo, to bookmark them. The reason I love this particular photograph is the way that the light is hitting the back. And he is now to one knee. Now for me to have gotten this shot, I had to be there. I, sometimes you get an opportunity to move to a place and a lot of times you do not. But I was in this area because I did notice that the back lights were... Um, moving around to certain areas. I had no idea he was going to do this, but I was there and was able to capture it. Now, when I say capture, I am taking shots before this particular uh, shot was, was captured. So I'm always shooting before. If you wait till you see it and try to photograph it, you've already missed it. So I take a lot of shots, and sometimes it's a rapid fire. Mostly the shots I take are about three per second by pressing on the button. And uh, again, in this particular night, I took 4,044. Okay. So what appealed to me on this particular photograph is the fact that his knee's down here, his knee is up here, his hand's on the mic, I can see part of his face, you can see the emotion in his face, and then the lights, how they come down on the back. It's, it's just neat, okay? Now this one's already been edited. So I want to take you from the beginning to the end, and I will have more of these videos uh, to show you what it's like to try to edit a very nasty photo and see if you can get something good out of it. Uh, but this one, first off, and I'll show you what the original looked like. Um, 
we'll just go up here to view. I said, let me get into develop here. We'll go up to view before. And so the before here, uh, and you may not be able to tell much difference, but obviously I got rid of these particular um, items here, but it is much sharper. It is clearer. The magenta on the face is not as prominent over here. Um, so you, you can definitely see there's some difference, subtle. This was a very good photograph to start with. So to get to this did not take much time. So let me get rid of this, and then we will start from the beginning of a different photograph. Now, uh, last night was Come and Take It, uh, the venue Come and Take It Live. Uh, this was Friends of Friction, and this was uh, this is Chris uh, Veden, I think uh, is his name, um, who sang in uh, uh, for a song for Friends of Friction. But Scream Therapy was um, the, one of the bands that played last night and Paul Lydell. And, of the, and as you can see, Paul is a very animated person. So there are quite a few shots that I got that I definitely want to go through and um, edit and post, okay? So I've got a lot of work on this one, but this particular one stands out to me. Now this one's a neat one, before I get to that one, this one's a neat here because of how the lights are shining down this way and how he is in there. Now it's not as clear as I would like it here. It's clear here. I may be able to pull something out of it, but that's gonna take a little extra work and I don't wanna do it at the moment. But this particular one that I'm getting ready to show you, this here, uh, I just love it. Paul is just a perfect person to photograph. He gives you the shots. He puts it out there. Uh, what attracts me to this shot is the fact that he is right there with the audience and the audience members make this, the fans make this photo as much as Paul makes this photo. So capturing uh, the fans interacting with the musician can add to the photograph. And so it's the composition of this photograph. If the fans were not there, it would be a great shot, but the fans being there just adds to it and really, really makes it. Now, this is not a bad photograph to start off with. This is going to be a good starting point, but it's not as sharp as I want it. I like my photographs to be sharp, clear as possible. Uh, there's a lot of detail in his hair, the way that the light is hitting uh, these particular parts of the hair and glowing are really appeal to me, and I want to bring that out. Uh, the magenta is not bad. I generally hate magenta, especially if it's just solid magenta. But the magenta is not bad on this. It was pretty clear. Uh, there's some blue in here. So we've got a bit to work on here. So this is a photograph that I've identified that I want. I flagged it. I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars, because meaning that I will complete this particular photograph. If I stop someplace mid-between, don't complete it, then I will lessen up the stars until I've actually completed it and exported it. So I'm in the library mode. I'm going to go to develop within Lightroom. Now this is Lightroom Classic, and I've been using it for a while, and I've got pretty good at uh, editing photos in here. I don't do much photo Photoshop. Photoshop's more creating. Uh, Lightroom is more editing. One of the first things that I will do in Lightroom Classic is go down to the bottom and take care of the lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration. I used to know what that was, but I, I think it's geared more towards photographs from the film stage or whatever, but um, I just go ahead and check it. I, I don't really remember what it is for, but being said, I then go up and the first thing I do is I sharpen and I always go to the extreme on the sharpening. Now you've got to be careful when sharpening it because sharpening will bring out all the creases in the face that is more prominent, especially with women, you have to be able to be careful with that. So I may back that off a little bit, but I think overall that's good. Now, right then you should be able to tell a little bit of difference in the photograph. Um, it, it's just crisper here and this white is brighter. So. I like that. If, uh, if I need to back it off, I will back it off. Okay. So now there's that. Now, 
what I will generally do next is start with the background. And the background is anything outside of the subject. And one of the things that you have to be careful about is that sometimes an item like a hat on the subject or part of the hair will be considered to be part of the background. And so you have to be careful about that. But I generally take care of the background. In this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of blur the background a little bit. I don't want to blur the uh, fans here, so I may have to go about that a different way. Um, you can, it, it, from my screen, I, you, you may not be able to tell looking at this, but from my screen, this looks to be a bit, uh, what we would say, noisy. But this is the smoke that was coming from, uh, from behind. Smoke is a challenge anytime you're photographing with the lights because what the smoke will do is grab that light and just spread it out and can and just sometimes wipe out the the photograph. So uh, one of the critiques I have with bands is sometimes the overuse of smoke. It can get and I realize you are doing this for your fans. It looks cool. I get that, but when it gets to the point when even with the naked eye, you cannot see the musicians, then obviously there's too much. But smoke was used very diligently last night. It was used very well, and then some of the photos added to it. So I've already got a sharpened up photo here. I'm gonna to go to the mask setting over here in Lightroom Classic, and I'm gonna to go to background. And uh, so back, and we gotta let this identify what it considers to be the background. So we see right here that all of this is the background, but she's part of the subject, and that actually is good. So it's not going to bother me to kind of blur these a little bit, but I don't want to do it too much. This is a particular case I'm not going to do too much. His, none of his hair is in the background of the guitar, so actually I am very pleased with this. So what I will do is um, I will go to the texture, which is a fine, which is a refinement it's, uh, of, of the sharpening. And I'm going to just lessen that a little bit. And it, you may not be able to tell too much, but when you're looking at the computer, you can clarity, you can usually tell a little bit more. So you can see how that got a little bit more blurred. Um, and this, so that's fine. That's about, that's about all I want to do. And again, it may not be something that you notice right off the bat, but if you're looking at this, um, I can. Okay. Blurring the background will also sometimes make the subject more prominent, or I say sometimes, a lot of times it will. Uh, if I have a particular subject that's not as crisp as I want it to be, and I've done everything I can to do to it, then I will blur the background a bit to make the subject matter stand out. So I'm satisfied with that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the subject. Now if I concentrate on the subject, it's going to grab all of this here. And her I do not really want to mess with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mask and I'm going to have it look for people. And so therefore, it should identify each one of these as a separate person. Now, in this particular case, it didn't. Uh, it only identified Paul, which is fine, because that's who I want to concentrate on. Now, when you focus on people, it will leave out the guitar unless it thinks it's part of the body of the person. So in this particular case, it may have done that, because when I hover over it, it's part of here. So we're going to click here. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on the hair and I want to create a mask around the hair. That way any adjustments that I make are only on the hair. And I'm going to sharpen it up a bit. Now you have to be careful in Lightroom because it, it when you do a mask, except for when you're doing what's called a brush, but when you do a mask, it sets aside a certain area for only the mask whereas the other area is for the entire picture. So if you scroll down too far, you may change the sharpening of the entire picture instead of the sharpening of the particular mask. So here we are, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sharpen it even more. And sitting from where I am sitting, it really brings out the hair, the, the different areas. And by the way, the hair is a result of uh, 
<laughs> sorry, I, I always go blank here. Uh, anyway, sorry. So here we go. Um, it really brings it out. Now, I just want to do something real quick here because I have started something and, and I want to finish it up here. My mind sometimes goes a little blank. So bear with me one second. We will have a Facebook aspect of this particular picture here. Suzette Lydell. And I apologize, Suzette. I, sometimes I got a name stuck in my head. The hair is Suzette Lydell's work of art. She, she informed me of that last night. But as you can see, it's, it's nice and sharp. I like it. Now, as far as the face goes, there's, I, there's really no sharpening I want to do. And I really don't even know that I want to mess with the magenta. But I, I, I want to get a little bit more realism in this. And I want to get a bit more flesh color in the face. So I'm going to play around with the face. So I'm going to go about and create another mask. I'm going to select people. And I'm going to grab the face and hit Create Mask, which excludes the lips and the eyes. And you see the redness there. Now, to counteract magenta, you use green, but you have to be careful because I do not want to bleach it out. But it lessens the magenta. And I'm going to increase the yellow, which will decrease, increase the yellow, which will decrease the blue, plus give the face a bit more color. Now, I don't know if that did much to it. I don't even know if I like that. Um, like I said, I don't know that it really needed anything, but I like to um, like to tweak a bit. So, um, in comparison, it's obviously clearer than it is over here. So I think I'm going to leave those settings as is. Now, there would be an obvious shadow on the neck, so I don't want to do anything there. The arms are fine with me. Now, if I were to go back to mask, go to people, and choose body, it would include the neck and the arms. So if I wanted to treat the arms differently than the neck, then what I would have to do is I would have to go create a mask with a brush and then just brush my changes onto the arm. So I am quite satisfied. Now, one of the things that I have recently started to do is to sharpen up the clothes and really make them stand out. So I'm going to go here to mask and go back to people and get the clothes. I have found that to really work wonders. Now, I'm hitting close, and it thinks the guitar is part of the close, which is fine with me. Notice that leaves out the hand. It thinks that part is part of the close. That is okay. And I'm really going to just sharpen that up a bit. So I'm going to go down here to sharpen. And it is really bringing it out. Again, for, for me looking at it. Now, it, it, you, you need to have a good monitor if you're going to edit photos. Okay. So I like that. I didn't have to do too much editing. I always try not to do, uh, I try to do as little editing as possible. But in this particular environment, it is important uh, to recognize whether you need to edit it or not. Uh, there's always going to be some tweaks that need to be done. Now, um, one of the things I have started doing is I've started doing what's called a vignette around the photo. And then what it does is it either lightens or darkens up the edges of the photo so that more focus is put upon the person in the center. So this being a rather darkened area, in other words, it's not daylight, I'm going to come down here and I am going to then grab it and darken it up a little bit. And I liked it because now it's more emphasis. Now, is it too dark? Could it be lighter? 
And again, I don't really have a just step by step of how I do this. I just I, I just look at it and start tweaking things. So I am going to add a bit more exposure. Now, when you start adding more exposure, it softens the, 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 the subject and makes it less sharp. And now there's too much light on here. I, I don't like that. So I'm gonna go to highlight and highlight by lessening the highlight will sharpen the subject. Highlight, lessening the highlight will sharpen the subject because it takes less light off of the given area. And now we're pretty much back to where uh, we were, except that it's a little bit lighter. Now, I'm, I'm having some hesitation here because this is not as dark as I needed it to be. So I may lessen the exposure a little bit. See, and actually, well, in that case, I just took all the exposure back off, so. So I'm going to go back, and I've added 0 0.09, which, wow, okay, that's, that's a lot. It's, it's not, but I'm going to go back and reduce the highlight a bit, add a little bit more light to it. So we've got a bit of a darker background, a little bit lighter here. It, uh, see, I want to... I'm going to add a little bit yellow to the photograph. We should brighten it up a little bit. But it's still not as light as I want it to be. So maybe I need to take out some shadow. Right, let's just go and maybe increase the exposure a little bit. These are just minute tweaks. But they make all the difference in the world. All right, so let's look at the, let's compare this to the original and see what we got. A little bit lighter. I like it. I like it a lot. One of the things you have to be careful about is just constantly tweaking. And uh, I sometimes will get, it just happens. It will just happens. So you just need to be careful about doing that. Now, there's one other thing I want to do, and this probably will be the last thing I will do. There's a dehaze feature here, which makes it sharper and gets rid of the haziness. This is just my terminology. Um, so it is called dehaze, but it will darken it up a little bit, but get rid of some of the... And I did a plus seven, which is minor. Now we're back to being a little bit dark. So if I go to edit, undo, I can see what it looked like. I had a little bit lighter here because I undid it. If I go back to redo. And again, it's a subtle change, but those subtle changes can make all the differences in the world. I'm going to add some more yellow to Brighten it up a bit, make it warmer. And I still, okay, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. To, once again, be careful. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to some previous steps to see what it looked like. Maybe I did exactly what I told you not to do, and let's overdo it. So I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to work my way up. I like that there. Don't know that that made up oh, there. It's a little bit darker. That looks good. I'm actually pretty satisfied with that. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more light. Reduce the highlight a little bit. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to walk through the steps real quick. Um, here's where we started off. And I'm going to go through each step. And just kind of go through. And 
I'm fine with that. I'm going to take off this vignette because it's making it too dark. So anyway, okay, I think we're fine. I I say fine, and then I sit here and want to tweak it a little bit more. But you got to be careful about over tweaking. Otherwise, you spend 20, 30 minutes or something. All right, that looks good. I'm satisfied with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export. It's very sharp. Uh, you've got the people in front here. You've got a musician back there. The focus is on here. Would love to not had so much magenta, but it's, it looks very good. So I'm going to go to File. And before I do that, I'm going to do one other thing on the hair. I'm actually going to let's see. I've already. I'm going to sharpen it up some more, and I'm going to reduce the highlight on it a little bit. And now, there we go. That's enough. That's enough. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Export. I'm going to choose the folder that uh, I'm going to place it in. So this is Paul Lydell Screen Therapy. So I'm going to go to P. This is the first time I have photographed them. They are, and listen to them, they are phenomenal. Paul Lydell Screen Therapy. Oh my God. If you haven't seen them, you need to see them. Screen Therapy. And I'm going to double click on that. And within that, I'm going to put a folder with the date. and the location. And this is where I will export the refined photos to it. So I'm going to give them a name, Paul Lydell. Now, I always like to put a watermark on some of them, so Paul Lydell, and that's going to be WM. And then I'm going to File Export, take off the watermark, so that I always have one without the watermark. And now I have exported. Okay, now it's to posting. So we're gonna go here to, um, to Facebook. And um, I'm going to go to my Seven Pillars Photography page. I'm going to start only posting photographs of musicians on this one here. And I am going to go to my page. Now, I also want to, to post it onto Instagram at the same time. So on this business page here, I'm going to go to Meta Business Suite, which will simultaneously post on Facebook as well as Instagram. So it saves me a step here. So I'm going to create a post. I'm going to add a photo, and the photo that I'm going to add is the one I just did, Paul Lydell, Dream Therapy. Now, I like to post these photographs singularly. I have tried posting multiple photographs of a band at the same time. I don't like doing that because I want each photograph to get the individual attention and the musician attention that they deserve. So with five postings of five musicians, it's better than one posting of five musicians in my book. I just like to do that. So I'm going to put on here who it is. Paul Lydell. Second spell of Paul Lydell. Well, you have to have your fingers on the right place. Screen therapy. It was taken on the 23rd at Come and Take It Live. And I'm going to put my little hashtag there, capturing the experience. And... I am going to publish that. And now it's going to hit um, Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Now, since we're here in Facebook, um, 
I want to talk to you musicians about something here. And it's concerning this particular photograph that I had posted earlier. Now, this is Chris Veden of Texas Microphone Massacre. So, Chris, if you're watching this, take note. Okay. So, Texas Microphone Massacre. Now, I, a lot of you musicians are new to me, even though you've been around for a while. And plus, it is, um, I don't remember names that well, and I just don't have time to, to uh, write them down all the time until I get to know you very well. So a lot of times I will go to your Facebook page and try to figure out who you are, okay? So not knowing, not remembering, so I go to search for Texas Microphone Massacre. And my expectation would be to see the names of the musicians there. And no, I do not. There's not even a link to your web page. Big no, no. You have, if you're, you're a Grammy nominated producer, uh, Tim, or uh, well, this guy here, but anyway, um, you need your web page. You need it on there. You need the members of the bands. So now I've got to figure out who this is. And if I'm trying to figure out who it is, what if I were a promoter? What if I was someone from out of town who wanted you there? How much time am I going to spend trying to find you? So, okay, do they have a web page? So now I went to here and I type in Texas Microphone Massacre. And, well, there we go, TMM. Okay. And here's where I learned who the members are. Now, I went up to here, uh, we went home, and there's where I got the name. So my critique of this band would be your Facebook page needs to have the name of the members of your band for easy reference, as well as a link to your Web page. Any other any other thing? Okay. All right. This has been Mike Wright. This is the first of what will be forthcoming more forthcoming videos. The next time I do one of these, I'll take show you what a bad photograph looks like and if it's salvageable. So thank you very much. Appreciate you. Hope you enjoy it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.